ओके गुड मॉर्निंग मई डियर स्टूडेंट एंड वेलकम टू दि ई शिक्षण प्रोग्राम ई एम प्रोफसर ए के नंदकुमर फ्रम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स इन दि इंस्टिट्यूट ऑफ सैंस बैंग्लूर ई मेनली डू रिसर्च ऑन दि टॉपिक ऑफ पार्शियल डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन बट इन दिस कोर्स ई एम गोइंग टू प्रसेंट मोड्यूल वन ऑफ दि कोर्स कॉम्प्लेक्स अनालिसी प्रोबबिलिटी एंड स्टाटिस्टिकल मेथड the course complex analysis part consists of uh, two modules module 1 and module 2 i'll be covering module 1 in the nine lectures next okay so the main theme of this course is to teach you something about the analysis of complex functions mainly the complex valued functions of the complex variable so for typically when you have a function f which is a function of a complex variable z this is what your complex variable variable and f of z is the value of the function we say that f of z is also complex that means z is the complex variable f of z is the complex value of the variable z under the function f so i want to tell you the basic analysis of complex valued functions mainly i want to concentrate on the properties of continuity and differentiability and then the co important concept of analytic functions and uh, then we will prove one of the most important theorem which is an equation a partial differential equation and is called the cauchy riemann equations but before going to the main theme of my lectures i want to motivate you why we want to study complex numbers and uh, we will uh, once you understand the motivation then it would be much more easy to study the complex analysis of functions so quite often we find difficulty in studying the topic mainly because we lack motivations so i may spend two to three lectures probably little more than three lectures mainly giving you some motivation and then i will do some recap of complex algebra namely the complex numbers and the algebraic operations like addition multiplication division and subtraction this is going to be a recap i will not be doing the details of it because you would have already studied some of these things in your lectures already so we'll let's start with the motivation that motivation is the one which we are going to do it so let's do that first so it's an important question why complex numbers so let me uh, why complex numbers all of you would have seen introduce or learn complex analysis by introducing a number of the form a plus ib where a and b are real numbers real numbers and you just introduce z equal to a plus ib is a complex number but unfortunately for a beginner this expression you can call it an expression or you can call it an object whatever it is this object seems to be quite artificial and uh, it has a problem because you don't know why such complex numbers are introduced and then the one of the major thing you don't know what is i and most of the time i is introduced in such a way that i equal to root minus 1 and your difficulty begins there 
what is this root to minus 1? Because in all your uh, study throughout your education, you have learned that square root of a negative number is not uh, defined. Nevertheless, even though this you do not understand what is a plus ib, soon you will start seeing applications of it. So, on one hand, there is a difficulty in understanding the complex number system, but you will see a plenty of applications in various engineering and science fields and probably that is a soothing effect. Though I do not know something, I do not know what is a complex number exactly, how a negative number is defined, I see a large amount of application and that is a good sign of it. So, this is the point I want to concentrate in the beginning. So, to introduce these complex numbers or a complex number system, I want to understand various number systems in literature, various number systems. And again, you would have seen it different things. I will explain to you a little bit. I am not going to explain each and everything because each one requires a, uh, a substantial amount of time which is not expected in this course. Okay? This is uh, mainly for the purpose of motivation, nothing more than that. So, you would have seen the set of natural numbers. You have that is a, a notation. You would have seen the set of integers. You would have seen the set of rational numbers. You would have seen the rest of set of real numbers. And purpose of the course, which you know already what is a complex number, you are adding to this a new number system, what is called a complex number system. So, I want you to introduce in this first hour how these systems, each one of them has its own history to tell you. Each one of them uh, uh, developed with certain purpose and that is what I want you to tell, uh, explain to you in this lecture. So, let us go with uh, one by one. So, let us go to the natural numbers. Okay, so, So, what is this n? So, we call it natural numbers. Number. The natural numbers are denoted by n, which is a collection of objects 0, 1, 2, 3, etcetera. Quite often you may, uh, many books, they introduce natural number without the number 0, but that is not a serious issue here. If you do not want to include 0, in the natural number system you can write 1, 2, 3 and add 0 to it as a separate thing. But let me include uh, without any ambiguity. Okay. So, when you introduce this number system as early as in the beginning of thing, one of the motivation which you get is the kind of notion of counting, notion of counting. But this notion of counting is one thing, but in practice you will see the number of uh, natural number system is used for various purposes. You use that natural number system to define various objects to measure the length, the weight, the things, etc. So, quite often in the beginning at the school level, the natural number system is not clearly defined. Say for example, when somebody comes and asks you, what is a natural number, you find it difficult. You say that 1 is a natural number, 2 is a natural number, you say that 10 is a natural number. But what is this 1? What is this 2? And then people do ask why 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 because 3 is an another object here. And then why 2 plus 1 is also equal to 3? And these kind of simple questions, these such simple looking questions, initial stages this looks quite trivial, 
But really when you ask, someone comes and asks you, what is a natural number system? What is a natural number? How do you define? You find it little hard to explain. So, scientists in particular, mathematicians would like to define everything in an unambiguous way. So, you want to define in an unambiguous way, when I say want to define natural numbers in an unambiguous way, means that mathematicians wants to give a set of rules, a set of rules and mathematicians fondly call such a set of each rule as an axiom. So, can I give a set of rules or a set of axioms from which I can unambiguously define my natural number system. That is the point mathematicians are looking for. How do you set up a set of axioms so that my natural numbers which I call it only an object. I do not attach any meaning to it. I want to define a collection of objects and which can be used later, but initially I want to and, uh, introduce a natural number system by setting it. And it is very remarkable and surprising that even though the natural number system is in use for thousands and thousands of years, only a hundred years back, Piano gave a set of five axioms called Piano axioms, Piano's axioms through which one can define the natural number system. Of course, this involves much more work and I am not planning to introduce and explain to you Piano's axioms, but the method of mathematical induction is one of the axioms and you would have already seen that how results can be proved using the set of mathematical, the method of mathematical induction. And I request the students in their leisure time go and see the Piano's axioms and how natural numbers uh, introduce and through which, through the Piano's axioms, all your doubts can be cleared. Bo using that, it also introduces the summation of two natural numbers. It also introduces the product of these are the two fundamental algebraic operations, addition and multiplication. Addition and multiplication. Okay. So, let me not pursue further on this set of natural numbers, but what I want to explain to you, there is a historical thing uh, and it took an enormous amount of time to come up with the Piano's axioms, probably in the beginning of 20th century or late 18th century, just 100 years back to understand the natural number system. Okay. So, let us now go to the next number system what we call it a set of negative integers, integers and of course, negative numbers, negative integers. All right. So, let us see how it gives that. So, what is the main philosophy? The main philosophy in all the development of number system is that you have some method or some system which is available to us is now n. When the existing system n is inadequate to solve problems, you try to enlarge the system so that your problem under consideration can be solved. That is the main theme always when we go from one number system to another number system. You go to that new number system in such a way that the existing problems cannot be solved the 
using the existing system, enlarge it, enlarge in the sense that the enlarged system should contain the existing system and all these operations. You should not contra uh, contradict the existing operations namely addition and multiplication available. But the new number system will have new objects and that new objects you can develop the algebra and other machinery required to study our problems and so it will be a new avenue. So what was the problem? So mathematicians always are not just mathematicians, physicists, engineers, all scientists want to solve problems. So in the beginning you look for simpler and easy problems. So let's start with what was the motivation for introducing negative num integers, more generally integers. Again, as I said, I will not be able to explain because that requires much more time and is not expected from this course. But the students again should read some additional material to understand things. Whether it is part of the course or not, it doesn't matter. You should enlarge your knowledge. Uh, by reading additional material which are not part of the course or syllabus. So what is the equation? It is a, li a linear equation. You want to solve it. Suppose n is in n, m n is in n. That means m and n are two natural numbers and uh, you want to solve find x in n. So that means you want to find a natural number such that x plus m n is equal to m. So can you do this one or when can you do this one? Okay. So the using the Peano's axioms and later the algebra developed on that. Using Peano's axioms you are already developed an algebra where you have defined m plus n and you also defined m n. These are the two quantities available. That means m and n are in n, m plus n is here, m n is here. That means n is closed under these operations. Under these two operations, this set is closed. We call it n is closed under addition and multiplication. So you know what is an addition. So the question is that given two numbers m and n, can you find a number in such that if that number is added to n with this operation, can you reach n? And then again, you know from your uh, high school theory, if m is greater than n, if m is greater than equal to n, then problem is solved. That's what I'm saying. Problem is solved and x is denoted by, it is not given, minus is not defined, x is denoted by that number denoted by m minus n and that is the operation. So in the operation subtraction can be defined within this natural number system only when m greater than or equal to n. So the natural question is that can I solve M, so the question is, this is my question without this condition. So you have a condition here and the solvability question for this simple equation could achieve only with this conveyor. Can we solve x plus m n equal to m for all m n belongs to m. And you see that within this system, this is not possible to solve it. So you see, so you have a solvability system for which the natural number system is not enough. So what did you do? do? So as I said, solving this issue is difficult. So introduce some new objects. Introduce new objects. Okay, new objects. What are these no objects? I denote, I have no meaning to it. I just call it a new object denoted by minus 1 
minus 2, minus 3, etc. Okay. As such, I have no meaning to it. It is just an object, nothing more than that. Okay. So, you will have uh, as just an object and I include this object in this collection and that is called the set of integers, set of integers denoted by number z that is equal to minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So, as a, again I am repeating, as such, this is a collection of objects which includes f. So, again you may have a question, why did I introduce these objects? Why, what is the reason to introduce only such objects in a discrete fashion? Is there a reason? Is there a motivation to do it? Yes, indeed there is a motivation. And then there indeed there is a very definite way of defining these abstract objects which I am not going to do in the class. Again you can see because this involves the concept of concept of uh, equivalence relation. I will not do here but if you are interested you should look into appropriate references to that one using the equivalence reference then the one of the difficulty if you have noticed even with an integer even with the positive uh, natural numbers with the positive integers uh, you there is something which is little more difficult to understand for example uh, uh, with uh, negative integers when you are doing it if i take you want to solve it here say for example I want to solve it x plus 1 to x plus 2 equal to 1. Okay. And I want to solve it x plus 3 equal to 2, x plus 4 equal to 2, uh, uh, 3, etc. Okay. So you see, these are all different equations when you look at at first sight. But then you are experience in your study indicates that all of them should have one solution. If it's with your familiarity, 1 minus 2 should be minus 1, 2 minus 3 should be minus 1, 3 minus 4, 3. That means your different equations have the solutions, same solution. So that involves again some abstract notion of mathematics and it is bit, it's not very difficult but it is beyond the aim of this present course but it is very interesting to learn that you can introduce this system with that you can introduce your z using that z your equation x plus n equal to m can be solved so you be achieved by the one problem now to solve this problem you don't have to uh, you can solve it in this full space now and uh, without any conditions on n m that is the main purpose of everything. So, you have enlarged. So, the negative numbers one way you can think that is the development from your natural number system associated with the solvability question x plus n equal to m with no conditions and n and m but to solve that problem in the n you uh, need the condition m greater than or equal to n. That is fine. So, after introducing, so once you have a thing for any m and z, now for any m, n belongs to z, you can define what is m plus n. This includes subtraction. Please keep that in mind includes subtraction. Why? Because, because m minus n is nothing but m plus of minus n. 
and minus n earlier there was no concept in the integers but now given an n in n minus n will be z and then m plus of minus n once you do that one. So, you can uh, define addition on this one and you can also define multiplication. So, again the integer number system is complete or closed with respect to addition and multiplication and what is the new thing happen? We have the solution to this problem without any conditions on n and m. So, let us now come to the third set of rational numbers. Okay. So, what is the next equation you want to solve it? So, having solved x plus m equal to 1, now the solvability, so you want to understand a new question of solvability of n x equal to m. What is the meaning of solvability? That is given n, now I am looking at the solvability z because I have a bigger class. So, I am looking for the solvability in a bigger class. So, given n m belongs to m z. So, you have a bigger class. So, I look for the solvability in that class. Find x such that n x equal to m. Can you solve it? Look at the example. Example from the familiar example ok because this is this equation is valid in z because given two numbers you know how to uh, take the product because product is also defined and then you know how to equate it. So, example suppose I have 5 x equal to 10 then you know that 5 into 2 is equal to 10 that implies x equal to 2 is a solution. But when you do 5 x equal to 3, this is an equation 5 x equal to 3 is an equation in z that means and I want to find an integer x such that 5 into that integer equal to 3. You know that no solution, no solution in z. So, that means when you have a solution, so z is inadequate. That is what we are saying that inadequate to solve this problem. Solve this problem. Okay. That leads to what we call it the concept of uh, that leads to the concept of rational numbers. So, again introducing rational numbers is a abstract way one can define it. As I said in the case of all these piano exams equivalence relation there will be another set of equivalence relation through which you can be defined. Okay. So, so, you want it to introduce q. How do we get some motivation? Let us look at the solution. Let us uh, look at this equation. When m is, uh, this is called, so this equation n x equal to m is solvable, n x equal to m is solvable in z, in z only if m is a multiple of n, multiple of n. That is, that is there exists k belongs to z, c belongs to z, that means the set of integers such that
m is equal to k n. If this is the case, in this case, in this case, x is equal to k. You have solved it. So, this equation is solvable. That is what we seen it through the example. If this equation is solvable, in this system of integers, for that m has to be a multiple of n. That means m has to be written as k. In that case, I call my solution x to be k. Symbolically, keep this in this is very important thing. I have not defined any division anywhere, but I represent this is in a symbolic notation. I have not, please keep that in mind. I have not defined the division. This is only a symbolic notation of for k. So, m is a multiple of n. You have a solution that is symbolically represented in this form. It is only a representation of this form. And this, I can get it as an integer if m is a multiple of n. And that is what I proved. Using this intuition, I will define some new objects now. That is the purpose. I want to recover new objects. You have ob uh, obtained the objects of the form 1, 2, 3, then minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, etc. Now, I introduce, so this is my definition, which is a collection of objects, which we call it Q. Q is equal to set of all objects of the form P by Q, with the P, Q belongs to Z, and Q not equal to 0. Okay. You may be surprised, why did, why did not I include the, uh, the include q equal to 0? Why did I remove q from there? I can always define this one. Again, keep this in mind. This is not a division right now. It is just an object here. I can also represent in another form. Another form if you want. It need not be of that form. I can have another form of q. That is set of all I can write in this form P Q such that P Q in Z and Q not equal to 0. Okay. So, have a representation. So, these are all representations. So, corresponding to every integer P and Q, I associate a number P by Q or P Q with Q not equal to 0. Why did I include this condition? q not equal to 0 because look at the equation which we want it with n equal to 0. This is exactly that equation. When if you consider the equation 0 into x equal to m, this equation is solvable, is solvable only if m equal to 0. Therefore, if m not equal to 0 and when m equal to 0 you can take any solution z. Every integer is a solution. When m equal to not equal to 0, no solution. This is your familiar concept division by 0 is not allowed. That is the reason division by 0 is not allowed in this setup. So, you have that good thing why division is not allowed and that is exactly the condition we put it. When q equal to this is I am looking p x equal to q in general. So, m equal to 0. If m is this is n is not equal to 0 and m is a multiple of n then you define x to be m by n. Okay. When n equal to 0 here you cannot do that. You cannot define that one and uh, that is it. That is the reason you are doing it. So, as again, let me repeat once more, this is only a collection of objects and I have to develop uh, the algebra there. So, how do you uh, develop my algebra there? Okay. So, let me do that motivation once more, then we will go to the sum of motivations in the next lecture. So, here we have defined this one. See, this is my second object that is equal to etc. 
minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 etc and now your q so there is an addition there is an addition there is a multiplication here also there is an addition there is a multiplication and then basically I was trying to understand when I say that I want to solve my ax m nx equal to m when I nx equal to m I am actually trying to motivate you the concept of division of that then you see that in general a division concept introduced here unless you put conditions on the n and m with that we have introduced these objects p by q with the pq belongs to z and then q not equal to 0. Now what is your thing? You have to see few things. The moment you introduce here, you already seen that at this stage n is a subset of z. You see n is a subset of c. Now how do I see my z is a subset of q? That is the first one job. That is easy if m is in z, I can also write m by 1. <coughs> this is the object. So, this is an object corresponding to m in 1. Keep again a repetition, not a division. This is an object corresponding to two integers. <coughs> you are associating a object. We call that object to be pq, p by q or pq. And this is in q. That way, I can view every number, I can write it as a number of the form from Q. And that way you can view my Z as a subset of Q. So you see, now what is my next job? Next job is to develop addition and multiplication. And then I see that the solvability question is. As I said, exactly like Z, you may wonder, what is the motivation for defining these things? Again, there is an issue just like you have seen that earlier. Uh, uh, you have seen that 2 minus 1 minus 2, 3 minus 2, 4 minus 2, 3, etc. all represents the same object here. Exactly, you have 1 by 2, 2 by 4, 3 by 6, everything has to represent the same object. But when you view it as an object, this object and this object or this object, all the three objects looks different. All these infinitely many objects looks different. But in practice, you know that it shouldn't look different. That's where you need the concept of an equivalence relation, which is a kind of abstraction and using that, you can define them. So there are some mathematical motivation and uh, terminologies and technicalities to be developed here. But what I want is that an addition and multiplication. Okay, addition and multiplication. That's easy, but you can still need a motivation. So if I take two elements, P1 by Q1, plus p2 by q2, the addition is little more difficult to motivate. How do you get motivation? First you see when p1 and q1, p, when p1 is a multiple of q1, you know how to define this. That is how the problem is solved. When this problem is solved, when m is a multiple of n, you know what is x. That means you understand p1 by q1 when p1 is a multiple of q1 because you get an integer. Similarly, if p2 is a multiple of q2, you get another integer. So, you know how to add two integers. So, you use that formula to arrive at this is my definition of addition. So, you have to get some motivation or some other way. One of the motivation is this one. Otherwise, take this as a definition. You get this to be p1 q2 plus p2 q1 by q1 q2. Since q1 is not equal to 0, q2 is not equal to 0, you know that q1 and q2 are not equal to 0. Keep it in mind that p1, q1, p2, q2 are all integers. Okay? 
so you do that similarly multiplication is p1 by q1 into p2 by q2 is equal to p1 p2 by q1 q2 and then you have the process after doing these uh, two operations okay after doing these two operations you have an algebra now so the set becomes more significant only when you add operations to it when you don't add operations to it this is not useful and this is not of any use for that matter this is what exactly you have seen just giving an uh, uh, expression here and if you don't have addition multiplication this is not useful and it become more significant when you introduce addition and multiplication you can use it then you came here again when you introduce some new objects but due to some motivation or some reasoning but then this is more significant when an addition is and multiplication is introduced and you could solve that equation of linear equations and then you could not solve the equation of the form nx equal to m here okay and then you introduce p by q with the p by q you introduce your algebraic operation and then prove all your loss so there is a significant work has to be done because you have to verify so many things there and as i said i don't want to do that here so with that i can also solve my problem okay it's bit interesting so i can solve the problem can solve the problem now suppose a b belongs to q now my space is q i have an enlarged space in which my algebraic operations are defined i have an enlarged space i want to solve ax solve ax equal to b when a not equal to 0 okay and a and b belongs to c or a and b belongs to q also or a and b belongs to p both are same and then i can actually solve the problem if a and b so you start with the solving when a and b belongs to c once you know how to solve a and b belongs to c you can also solve this equation with a and b belongs to q so first so i want to solve this equation in z and i want to get find x find x in q of course you cannot solve this equation with x in c which is that's the how we have started with so your solution is given by this b by a this is what your solution why that is a solution how do you prove that's a solution you see this one a into b by a right that's what you want to do this is what you are ax ax equal to this one and by definition a is a by 1 and into b by a okay and by definition this is equal to a b by a that's what you have seen it here when you have two numbers you have to have two numbers now how do you do this one how do you cancel you i cannot cancel i don't know because this is an object but then there is a cancellation property all this cancellation property comes from the development of cancellation property okay i will not do this here i will not at all explain this here these are all part of the definition of these things how p by q is defined how the equivalence or relation comes uh, and how you identify all these things as i said that these are all different but then you have to see that both are same that's what you have to see a b by a will be the same as b by one that's what you have to see and that's what uh, an equivalence relation is used you identify everything as the same element but of course uh, we have one by two and one by three are different but one by two and two by four these two expressions are same but these two expressions are different that's why so a b by a will be same as b and that's equal to b that by definition 
so you have your ax equal to b is solved so you have your q so what is the next number system that's what uh, the final part in this first lecture i want to do it okay so let's do with that i will not do uh, that is a yes actually if you look at this one up to this was relatively easy from there i want to define the real number system what is the motivation for doing this because let's see why the motivation and application we have dealt with the two equations x plus a equal to b and we also seen this equation these equations are linear equations linear equations in the process of solving these two linear equations we have developed uh, z and then we have developed q okay and the, these numbers in q numbers in q are called rational numbers rational numbers okay so now we go to quadratic equation quadratic equation i want to solve the equation x square equal to a for every a if possible so i want to solve this equation okay as you know so there are two cases case 1 i want to solve this equation given not case 1 we will come to that one but what is the solvability given a in q find x in q such that x square equal to a this is my problem then here is an exercise for you which you can try consider this equation x square equal to 2 2 is in q as it is q by 2 the exercise is that there does not exist any x in q x equal to p by q q not equal to 0 but there so that p q r p q r in z so that p by q is in q such that x square equal to p by q no it's not x square equal to p by q p by q into p by q that's your p square by q square equal to 2 of course this involves a proof you need to prove that does not exist any integers such that p square by q square equal to 2 or p square equal to 2 q square and it would be interesting and pro most of you would have seen in your this proof in your 12th standard but it is worth recalling the proof okay so now comes to the two cases case 1 so i want to so that means we need a new system we need a new system and that is the system of real numbers okay so we will come to that one because that is much more delicate and we need to introduce uh, a Uh, as i see that this system is not enough the system of rational numbers is not enough to prove this system and this system is denoted by r the set of real numbers so there are two cases case 1 with a positive and case 2 with a negative 
ok. This is much more difficult and this is the case lead, so the case 1 leading to a system of real numbers and the case 2 will lead to even in with this condition even after enlarging the system R you cannot solve this system and eventually this case will lead to the class of complex numbers which we will do it but I just want to finish this lecture by telling that developing an R you have a kind of nice way of developing from n to z to q but unfortunately there is no nice way of developing a real number system. Maybe I will tell you a couple of uh, sentences in the second lecture to begin with and then we will show you some other two more examples before going before introducing the complex number system. Thank you.